Hey everyone, my name is Venerin, and in this video we're going to see how you can build your own Waco MCP server and connect it to Cursor, VS Code, Quote Code or other MCP compatible IDE. Our MCP server is going to be using Doclink to convert PDF files into Markdown completely locally. Let's get started. If you want to become a better AI engineer and understand MCP in depth, go and subscribe to MLExpert Pro. There, you're going to find a complete AI engineering academy that starts from setting up your tools, going through the basics of statistics, Python, PyTorch, and machine learning, help you to develop and deploy your own machine learning projects, and then go into Arax, CAX, AI agents, and workflows. So if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to MLExpert Pro. In this tutorial, we're going to be building a local MCP server that uses the standard input-output protocol to transfer the data between the MCP server and the client. Of course, you're free to use any of the other transfer protocols and MCP is constantly expanding, but the core features remain pretty much the same. We're going to be using the Python SDK provided by Anthropic and this will allow us to create the server and connect it to our local cursor instance. This is the MCP PDF reader project opened in my local cursor instance. This is going to be open source on GitHub and I'm going to link the repository down into the description of this video. Here are the dependencies for the project. We're going to be using Doclink to convert the PDF files into Markdown. Then we're going to be using the official MCP server implementation. Then we're going to be using the PyPDFium, which is going to be the backend that is going to convert the PDF files into text. And then I have a rough to essentially beautify my Python code. Our MCP server is going to convert the PDFs into Markdown and this is one of the PDFs that it is going to be using for that. And here you can see this is a customer complaint policy by a company. Uh, nothing fancy but still some formatting, some bullet list points, etc. We're going to be using this PDF to feed it into our local cursor instance with our MCP server. Back in my cursor instance, you can see that we are starting the server file with initialization of the fast MCP server. Then I have path to the data directory which contains the PDF files that we're going to be using. Then you see that we are creating this PDF converter. I'm going to show you in a bit how this is done. And then we have just two tools, get document text and get document list. After those tools are initialized and defined, we are going to start the MCP server. And as I have already told you, we are going to be using a local standard IO or input output for the transport protocol for our MCP server. Let's have a look at the tools for the get document text. We are going to be giving a path to the file name that is within the data directory. And then we're going to be calling this function convert to markdown given the document path and the document converter that we have created here. The other tool is get document list and this tool is going to be simply enumerating or listing the available PDF files that are within the data directory. So let's have a look at the PDF converter file and this is where the magic with Doclink actually happens. In this case, I don't want to do any OCR or table structure recognition or any of that since I want just to have a feel of how this digital PDF is going to be converted into Markdown. So if you want to have more comprehensive overview of how you can use the Doclink pipeline, you can turn those features on. And then we have the next helper function convert to Markdown. This again is going to take the PDF path and it's going to be using the PDF converter to convert it to a Doclink document. And this instance can now be exported to a markdown and it is going to be returned to the client that is calling our MCP to code get document text. To run your MCP server, I'm going to be loading my UV environment and I'm going to be running just Python server. You're going to see that after the server is running, you can call the mcp dev server.py. 
this should open your MCP inspector and uh, here you need to connect it to your local instance. And now if you go to the tools, you should be available to see the get document text tool and the get document list tool. So if you run this tool, you're going to see the result with the list of the PDF documents that you have. Within this tool, you need to specify the PDF file. And if you run this tool, you are going to get the markdown file that contains the information and the text of the document itself. You can see here that the images are being replaced. So pretty much everything here is configurable with Doclink. But other than that, we got our markdown as a result. After we have tested that the MCP server is running and with the MCP inspector, we even tested the tools. I am in my new project within cursor and here I'm going to go to the settings and then tools and integrations and then I'm going to be opening the MCP JSON. So uh, even here I have the correct completion for the configuration. So here we're going to be using our UV instance and since this my UV is actually installed with Brew, this is the path to the UV binary and then we're going to be using the directory flag or parameter to give the complete MCP PDF reader path to the server, which is of course a local project. And then uh, I'm going to be using just the server.py file. So now if we open the configuration here within the cursor instance, you are going to see that this is going to be the execution of the server. And then you see that we have the get document text and get document list tools available in our local cursor instance. The setup process for VS Code or even Gemini CLI and Quote code should be very similar. You just need to have a look at how you can integrate external MCP servers into your editor. Now within our cursor composer, I'm going to be asking what PDF files do I have? Let's run this. And you can see that the agent compose for cursor is actually coding the get document list and this is actually returning the customer complaint policy and the nvidia april file that we have so uh the integration is already working and i'm going to be passing in a much more complex prompt that should work within this and uh here i'm saying create a beautiful and simple html page that contains a checklist for the customer complaint policy uh, make it clean, minimalistic, make each step into a form of swipe. When it is complete, uh, you should be able to go back to. So this should go ahead and actually call the get document text. So this is exactly what is happening right here. And the response for that should be the markdown that we got. And this is the markdown received from the PDF file. And then the composer is going to continue by creating our web page within our cursor instance. Our cursor instance actually created the HTML file and I'm going to be keeping that. And this is the resulting HTML with the checklist integrated within this slider. And as you can see, the cursor instance actually got ahead and understood the markdown from the PDF file. And this information here is actually taken exactly from the customer complaint policy procedure. So you can use this MCP PDF server to load your local files and use that as a context to your cursor or other IDs. So this is it for this video. We've seen how you can build a local MCP server and connect it to your IDE. In this case, this was cursor and we are using Doclink to convert local PDFs into Markdown and use that as a context to our IDE. Thank you for watching guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down in the description of this video. The complete source code for this MCP server is going to be open sourced and I'm going to link it into the description of this video. 
And if you want to become better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro, where you're going to get lifetime access for the AI Engineering Academy. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.